you're watching this video on a screen, and there's a good chance it's an LCD screen, a tech so ubiquitous and dependable and kind of magic, you're probably not even giving it a second thought. It's everywhere. Do you know how it works and where it came from? It turns out that the story of the early days of the LCD features one of the biggest L's ever taken by an American tech company, and also this sweet whiskey advert. It starts, of course, with an Austrian man playing with a carrot. Somehow, he managed to extract a strange compound. If you heat it up, it melts into a grey liquid. So far, so normal. But then if you keep heating it, it seems to melt for a second time, becoming a different, clear liquid. Now, to be clear, things shouldn't melt twice. That just isn't fair. Everything else gets to melt once. You know, ice turns into water, but then it stays as water until it evaporates. It turns out that what he found was weird because it was a liquid crystal. It could bend light like a crystal, but it can flow around like a liquid. And for about 80 years, everyone was like, liquid crystals? Cool, what do we do with it? Which is good because it gives us a second to talk about TVs. Now, the main name in TVs in America at the time was a company called RCA. They were a big part of the rollout of the initial black and white TVs in like the 50s. Uh, and then a little bit later were absolutely dominant in bringing in color TVs. But now they were starting to think about a point where everyone already had color TV. By the time you've upgraded everyone from black and white, what do you sell them next? And it became clear that one idea that was worth pursuing was a flat screen. Now, it's worth bearing in mind that a TV in the 1960s looked like this, right? You have a lot of TV for not that much TV. People wanted more TV per TV. Now, early in the 60s, the RCA was actually faking this by kind of cutting a hole in your wall and like kind of wadging a TV in there. But they wanted to do it for real. And that would mean finding a whole new display technology that would let them sell the TV to everyone again for the third time. As you might have guessed, this is where liquid crystals come back in. RCA researchers realized that you can sandwich some of this stuff between glass, run an electric field through it, and it churns up the little areas of the crystal as they try and align themselves with the electric field. This turns the crystal from clear to cloudy with the click of a button. It was 1968 and the LCD had been born. Initially, RCA was very excited about what they created, and they went about marketing it in the most 1960s way possible. They organized a big press conference where the VP envisioned portable flat screen TVs. You could take such a set to the beach, he joked, and in between bikini watching, see the Mets on TV figure out a new way to lose a ball game. It was, uh, it was a simpler time. Also, keeping with the 60s-ness of the whole thing, I want to point out that basically the first commercial thing that the LCD was ever used for was this cool-ass whiskey advert. If anyone knows how I can get a hold of this, I'm, I'm willing to pay big bucks. I mean, look at it. Now, this early LCD was a big milestone. It was the beginning of a brand new technology that would change the world. But as with so many early versions of things, it was a little bit problematic. And I don't mean it had awkward tweets resurfacing from 2011. There were big technical problems that needed to be solved to make this a more useful technology. Now, the big one was you can't really see it so great in sunlight because it has a, a mirror at the bottom of it. The more light you shine on it, the colors get washed out, which is a big problem for, say, checking your watch during the day. Also, it requires a constant voltage, a constant power input, which made it very power hungry, which, again, isn't great, especially when you're trying to make lots of small things in a small space. But RCA researchers were already starting to solve these problems, and a lot of the ideas that would go on to become the next generations of LCDs decades later were already being dreamed up in these labs in the 60s. Unfortunately, a Nepo baby was about to come along and ruin this progress. Around this time, RCA's well-respected and long-serving CEO and chairman David Sarnoff was replaced by his son Robert. Now Robert wasn't exactly the man that his father was and didn't quite have the same business savvy. He enacted a galaxy brain scheme to go all in on computer manufacturing, which quickly proved to be an unmitigated disaster. In only a couple of years, he had to sell a big portion of RCA, racking up a $490 million loss, the biggest such loss in American history at that time. So it's no surprise that this led to RCA executives looking to cut down on spending and wary of any new harebrained schemes that the company could undertake. 
The researchers themselves became fed up with the leadership and lack of investment in their promising invention, even when other companies were making big LCD products using the ideas developed in RCA labs. Eventually, many of them would decide enough was enough and take their innovations elsewhere, often having interesting and important careers beyond their days at RCA. So poor leadership and failure to recognize and invest in a good idea had cost RCA, the inventors of the LCD, a big slice of a $100 billion market. And the truth is, they never really recovered from the mistakes they made during this period. And not just fumbling the LCD, but also the whole computer misadventure and buying out all sorts of other companies as well. This poor management eventually led to Robert getting kicked out of his own company. But despite all this, the LCD obviously survived. And the initial research done by that first team at RCA was built on by lots of brilliant people who made the screens that we have today. Now, it's a technology that's being replaced in some places by screens that use less power or look better. But it's hard to overstate the amount of things that the LCD has made possible. So it's a technology that stands at the kind of basis of so much stuff that we have today, which means, of course, on Invention Review, it's going to get a big score. The LCD. Do you think that's fair? Do you think it should have got more, less? I'm intrigued to hear your thoughts. Um, and I'd also like to know what should we look at next? What deserves a review? We do good and bad inventions on this show. I'd like to shout out Benjamin Gross, whose research on this topic formed the basis of the idea for this video. Uh, he's got a great talk up on YouTube as well as a book, which is all linked below. I'd also like to shout out everyone that's come to the channel over the last two or three videos. I know it's not a lot, a lot, you know, but it means a lot to have people engaging with my stuff kind of just made these for me and so the fact that people are talking, correcting my silly mistakes, it means a lot. I want to shout out Joel. Joel's commented on every one of my videos, so big up Joel. Thank you, I appreciate that. But yeah, thank you for the love. It means a lot. Uh, and if you haven't subscribed already, you're enjoying the content, jump on, join the team. It's just, you know, we're just having fun with it. Uh, I'll see you in the next video, guys. Love you, bye. bye.